From top to bottom, it feels like Clive and Wrench wanted to take the world by storm, and that's quite understandable given its nearly decade-long development history. Immediately upon startup, the game celebrates its ambitions of 3D platforming greatness, with a lengthy, well-animated intro cinematic, a charming menu screen, and, in general, it's punching way, way above its weight class. There's so much detail, spectacle, and soul on display in every corner of Clive and Wrench, particularly in the game worlds themselves. There are so many nooks and crannies, physics objects, stunning set pieces, and every inch of scenery is lovingly crafted to serve both as eye candy and engaging environmental platforming. So yeah, the level design is largely fantastic, inviting the kind of wonder and whimsy so often associated with this genre. To help matters, the proper platforming mechanics are both skillful and simple. You can chain a variety of moves together with ease, but you're still required to think actively about your pathfinding and angle of approach. Basically, Clive and Wrench is really good at first impressions. It's got its hiccups, but the sheer passion is overwhelming. Unfortunately, uh, the longer the game goes on, the more said passion is outweighed by a lack of polish. Like, I lost track of how many animation errors there are, how many brainless enemies would run in place endlessly, how many garbage collectibles were strewn about vacant hallways, how many times I encountered unfinished geometry. It's not as though the entire experience is broken, but it oscillates rapidly between shockingly competent and seriously defective. This is most highlighted during the boss battles, which are either rewarding challenges which require critical thought, or baffling button-mashing buffoonery. Overall, despite Clive and Wrench's clear creative ambitions and golden heart, its inconsistency is ultimately unbearable. It's a huge shame.